Hello everyone, it's James from Keeping Anime, and today we're talking episode 33 of Bongo Stray Dogs, entitled The Masked Assassin. Now this episode was amazing. Overall, all the episodes in this current season have been brilliant, but this one took it to a whole new level. So we have the fall, kind of, of both the leaders of the Port Mafia and the detective agency. So it turns out that in this episode, the boss of the detective agency and um, Maury basically are now linked together to where um, if one dies, the poison from the other who lives goes and vice versa, but if after two days they're both still alive, then the cannibalism ability, oh that was a butcher of a word, cannibalism ability that is affected both of them will kill them both. And this basically sets up the big tension at the end where the Port Mafia and the detective agency are left basically squaring off to see who gets to kill who to save their respective bosses. But how do we get to that point? Well, basically we start the episode off with some fantastic animation. The scenery in this opening was just phenomenal. I really did like it and I was actually thinking about putting it as the thumbnail because it was that nice. But that'd be kind of boring, so I thought I'll put it as the background when I put up pictures for you guys to see when I'm explaining things. So that's a little bit of a compromise. But hey, I'm getting distracted. So basically, the leader of the detective agency falls at this point from a masked assassin. And this is due to some poison. But at this point, we don't know what the poison is. All that we know is that the female from the detective agency who has Thou Shall Not Die, she can't use her ability on him because when she does, it doesn't work. Okay, nice clarification there. Good. Now, we go to Dazai at, the, um, at this point and he's giving us his insight. He's saying that the Port Mafia are the ones who lose the most for this mask assassin being out there attacking gifted users. Because if one of their members was to fall, since they're the leaders of the night, the detective agency, not the detective agency, the Port Mafia, um, were to lose one of their members, the Port Mafia's reputation would plummet big time. Okay, brilliant, cool, some Darzai information. Always good. Now, the other thing that we then get thrown into is the plan that the Port Mafia has to get rid of this assassin. In this scene, we see um, Maury and Elise basically going shopping, and they're the decoys. To lure out this guy, they basically get into a cart that it then explodes, but, the, but thanks to Elise's ability, they both survive. And in this scene, we get a very comedic scene, which did make me laugh, it was hilarious. Basically, a police officer comes up to Maury and says, are you guys okay? You know, after what just happened, their car exploded. And Maury goes, oh yes, it was my mistake. My uh, girl here wanted to give the, gar the car some orange juice. So she put some into the fuel tank and it went boom. And the expressions and the sounds and tones and effects that they used in this part in this scene was just hilarious. Maury's sort of voicing and accent, tone, was brilliant. At least his facial reactions just made me laugh way too much. Uh, because she's just like, what are you all about? That's, no one's going to believe that. And then it turns out, the big reveal, this policeman was actually the demon Fredora. If that's how you pronounce the name, but that's how I'm going to pronounce it. He then stabs Maury and... That's how the two bosses are taken down, essentially, and linked with this cannibalizing ability. So then, straight after this, we find that Atagawa is facing off against the Masked Assassin, which turns out to be a former member of the guild, um, 
Nathanel. And basically, if you remember in season two, he thought against Atagawa, and just as he was about to die, because he can control blood, um, that was Nethanol's ability, blood control. Um, Atagawa basically killed a female character instead, which is basically the reason as to why um, Nethanol is basically turning into this mass assassin and attacking gifted users. He was told that if he does, then his loved one can come back. This scene was a little bit kind of off-putting because um, Atagawa's kind of reaction to this was, huh, I can relate to that. Yeah, okay. Unfortunately though, you're doing it wrong, so I'm going to take you out. Now, I don't see how Atagawa can relate to that unless the special person that Atagawa has is Jin, which is his sister, and... Or, it's um, Atashi, which, guys, if you want to ship that, by all means, but I'm not. Um, <laughs> or it's somebody else, we don't know. It might be the crazy chick that has a thing for him. Whatever. But, yeah, so we find out that that's the Master Assassin. And the funny thing is, he's got his mind played with, because he doesn't remember who Atagawa is. You would think you would remember the guy who killed your loved one. Okay, fine. But then we get some brilliant interaction between Dazai and Fredora. So, the two are in an alleyway, talking it out, and this is where Fredora says that those two are alike. In the way that they think, in the way that they speak, in the way that they plan, in everything that they do. So, Fredora believes that humans are foolish and sinful. And that's why he needs to get rid of the gifted. Does, I think, the same. But he finds that that trait in humans is one of their best qualities. He likes that about the human race. Now, we keep getting this idea of Fredora wanting this magical book. And this book seems like it's on par with the Death Note, as we're told in this episode that this book can basically manifest, slash create, whatever the user writes into it. That's kind of broken. But Fredora basically wants to write in this book to create a world that's rid of sin and the gifted. So whether or not he just wants to get rid of gifts, I don't know. Or if he wants to get rid of the people in general. But whichever way, it's not going to be good. This scene basically had some good animation, brilliant facial expressions, amazing music and effects, and a good conclusion. Because although we had some brilliant information dumped in this scene, the ending to this was great because it ended with Dazai losing. In the sense that he got outplayed. Fredora outthought him, um, as we thought, because Dazai ends up on the floor basically out of action. But it is stated that Dazai kind of knew that he would, but in order to obtain the information that he did get, he would have to do this. So it was kind of like a, I'm going to make you believe that you believe this, that I believe this, and you believe that. And it got into a bit of a mess. But they handled it nicely. Now, I will own up to this. When watching this scene um, of Kunikida and the other detective agency members thinking of a plan of how to do it, because, like I said earlier, if Morio dies, or Mori dies even, then the detective agency's boss survives. If the, the boss for the detective agency dies, then Mori survives. If they both survive, they both die. So, obviously, the Port Mafia are going to go all guns blazing, storming in with their best um, fighters. The detective agency is missing their leader and Dazai because Dazai is um, undergoing surgery. Now, I was thinking to myself, why is Dazai undergoing surgery when the female on their side has thou shall not die and could fix him up right away? But then, when I tried recording this review before this recording, I asked myself that question, and 
I answered it by saying, does I can cancel out gifts? And so if he cancels out thou shall not die, he's in trouble. So, you know, there's that. That's why she can't heal him. So Dazai is out of action. And the tension and the build-up to next week's episode ended with a lot of hype on this episode because the Port Mafia raided the hospital that the um, detective agency were in, ready to kill, ready to pounce. Chuya was looking badass in this episode. Uh, he was completely destroying the building just with his gravity alone and standing and walking with every step that he took. Brilliant. Atagawa and everyone else was at the entrance waiting to go in. It was just that big hyped up feel that you get before a big climactic fight. And since um, we're on that subject, the episode does end with basically the detective agency's main men that are able to fight squaring off against, oh sorry, and women, can't forget Kyoko and uh, the other lady, my bad, Um, uh, squaring off against uh, Chuya, Jin, Atagawa, um, is it Himika, the girl that likes um, Atagawa, and a couple of other fighters. So basically, it ends with Chuya asking the question, do you want to do this one-on-one, or do you want to do this all in a big mess, everybody in at the same time. And this really does not vote well for the detective agency. Why? Well, because in terms of strength and ability, they're kind of in trouble. I'm not going to lie, personally speaking, I think the detective agency's um, top two fighters are basically, from a raw physical standpoint, um, Atashi and Kyoko. Those two characters are the only ones who are going to be able to pull their weight in terms of power. Now, yes, they've got the farmer dude that's got brute strength, but Chuya can kind of destroy him with gravity. Um, Atagawa can kind of pick up the pieces wherever he can't. Like, if you think about the Port Mafia's, like, power, then they've won. If you think about it in terms of strategy and intelligence, the Port Mafia has lost in that regard because the detective agency has Rampo and has Kunikida. So, positives on both sides, but it is looking bad for the detective agency because technically they're playing without their um, king and their queen. And yes, we can put Dazai in a dress and call him a queen. I'm sure he would love that. So this leads to the question, is it going to be one-on-one or is it going to be a big brawl? Now, personally speaking, I think it's going to be a big brawl, but I think it's going to be everyone starts at a different point in the city and it's basically going to be an all-out battle, which one standing gets to kill the leader of the other one. But the way that I see this working is that the detective agency will win. But the detective agency's boss will fall in this part because of some reason. I don't know what the reason is. If I had to guess, I would say that it's Dazai or um, himself kills himself or something with his last bit of consciousness that he can muster. But I do think the detective agency is going to lose their boss, but they might win the battle. That's my thoughts on the upcoming episodes. But it is going to be a two-parter because next week's episode is called Cannibalism Part 1. I love that title. It's brilliant. But guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Did you like this video? And do you think it's going to be one-on-one? And do you think one of the bosses are going to die in the upcoming episodes? Who do you think is going to win? Like I said, my money's on the detective agency, but I feel like the price of winning is going to be too high for them as a whole. So realistically, that's everything I've got to cover, I think. Overall, I really enjoyed the animation of this episode. The music in this episode was fantastic. It really did give you the chills at the beginning because it felt a bit like a horror where we see all these good people getting taken down by this mask assassin. The reveals and twists were great. 
because Redora is a brilliant villain at the moment. And then the big hype and conclusion just make the episode that much more greater and pulled the ribbon at the top of the brilliant parcel that is episode 33, Masked Assassin. So, that's going to do it for this review. If you've enjoyed, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new so you never miss a video from me, and until next time, I hope you'll have an amazing day, and well, keep it anime. Goodbye.